Hi, honey family. Welcome back to another episode. I know you're all probably tired of hearing me talk about this, but I'm fond of Ouija boards. So here's another collection of true stories about Ouija boards. Sit back, enjoy the show. If you like what you heard, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. A few years ago, I moved into my own place. And while the first few nights wasn't too bad, just the odd clanking and smashing that just got plain annoying after a minute. I have an old wooden cupboard with removable doors, and I'd often wake up in the morning and find the doors removed and my clothes on the floor. Also, the moving around of certain pieces of furniture was quite frequent. A lot of the time, I'd think I'd lost something. Then, a few days later, find it somewhere completely different than where I'd left it. I got my friends over one night, and we tried a Ouija board. Yes, I'm aware of how dangerous they are, but I'm experienced with a Ouija board, so give me a break. Anyway, we discovered that the ghost in my house had lived there for a long time and was really quite friendly. His name was Jonathan, and he had lived in the house with his parents until he had died at the age of 13 from leukemia. Jonathan explained that he didn't like the way I had redesigned the house. That's why he was moving the furniture. And the whole thing with taking my stuff and putting it in different places of the house was just his way of playing hide and seek with me. Anyway, I told Jonathan that I didn't mind sharing the house with him as long as he didn't keep hiding my things and throwing my clothes around and he had to stop moving my furniture. We came to an agreement that we would share the house and anything he didn't like, he would just try to live with or, I mean, deal with because he wasn't alive. So yeah. I haven't heard much from him lately, just the occasional flickering of lights. Sometimes he still moves my furniture, just to let me know that he's still there. I've learned not to move the furniture back to where I had it. After all, he's been living here a lot longer than I have. Story 2 A Spirit Called Hope I was in elementary school when a few of my friends and I got really into Ouija boards and the dark things that typically kids are interested in at one point or another. I was always uncertain about it because my friends and our families had always warned us about what could happen. I never really believed in the supernatural, not fully. I came to find out that I was very naive. It was grade 8 when two of my friends and I had made a Ouija board. I had been told that those are usually the worst kind was all the energies you put into them. My one friend was very spiritual and did some kind of spell or something on the board to protect us. At this point, I still don't believe in any of it. Anyway, I wouldn't play it because of what my family friends had told me. The two girls started playing and supposedly summoned a spirit by the name of Hope. These girls weren't always the most trusting of people. I had met, so I thought they were just trying to scare me. This Hope girl said that she wanted to kill me. I honestly thought that it was a joke, and then my mom came home, and we stopped playing. It wasn't until a year or so later, I'd been sitting in class writing notes, just like any other day, when I felt an unbearable pain in my left arm. I happened to be sitting beside a very Catholic girl when I said, Oh, my arm really hurts. She turned and looked at me, at my arm, and started to gasp as both of us noticed that there were three welts appearing on my knuckles, going up to my elbow, then by my thumb, what appeared to be an upside-down cross. Close to it on my hand was the word hope. The girl next to me then started praying. I got up, terrified, and ran to the main office to call my mother. I had told her about what was happening, and of course she did not believe me at all. She told me to stay calm and that she would come and get me and take me to the doctors. It wasn't shortly after the call that she arrived. We went to my family physician and I had to explain to her what happened with a great deal of embarrassment as well as fear, knowing that no one would really believe me. She took a magnifying glass and used her fingers to run along the skin to see if I'd done it myself. After the examination, her face went white. She called my mom in and said she needed to talk to her, and I asked if I could stay in here. 
The doctor then told my mom that there was absolutely no way possible that I could have done this to myself because all of the markings were under my skin. My mom then believed that this was happening. My doctor gave me a prayer to say at bedtime. I had put it in my mom's purse when I got home. I went to look for it and it was gone. From that day, there were many weird things that happened, including hangers that were laying on our bed. When we left, that when we returned, they had moved into the shape of a triangle and were standing upright on the bed by themselves. I know this story is very unbelievable, but it did happen. I have no pictures to prove it, but I will always bear the scar of hope. Story 3. The Talking Board I have a fourth-generation daughter with the ability to see and speak to spirits that are still attached to this world. It's my gift, and sometimes my curse. Over the course of my life, I have encountered quite a few spirits that have made a lasting impression on my life. Some good, others not so good. Here are a few of the most memorable for me. The first time I remember seeing a ghost, I was only about seven years old. I was on vacation with my family in the western part of Colorado. I wandered away from our camp and became lost. I wandered for what seemed like hours before I heard a beautiful flute playing down by a stream. I followed the sound to a kindly old man dressed in buckskin and beads. Feathers hung from his gray hair. He was real to me as anything I'd ever seen before. It wasn't like popular cinematic ghosts. I could not see through him. After a short time, he stopped playing, and he turned to face me. He had sad eyes. I will always remember his sad eyes. But he smiled at me, and he asked me where my parents were. He said I should not be wandering away like that, and he offered to take me back to my parents. He sang to me in a language that I didn't understand as we walked through the woods. When we got back to camp, I called out to my parents. But as they turned around, I felt his hand let go of mine, and he was sort of fading away into just an outline. I knew then that the nice old man was really a ghost, but I wasn't afraid. My next memorable ghost encounter came to me through a Ouija board. I was enrolled in a Catholic school at the time. The school itself had a harmless spirit of a little boy who had fallen into a well and died. To this day, he resides on campus, but that's another story into itself. My classmates and I decided that we were going to try to speak to the little boy who haunted our school using a Ouija board. That was not a very smart idea. We encountered a spirit who claimed to be the little boy, but the spirit lied. He was destructive and very evil. We took turns taking the Ouija board home with us, as we had all chipped in to buy it. When it was my turn to have it for a week, the trouble really started. First, my bedroom began to grow cold and have a funny smell to it. Then, objects on my dresser began to move around. I started using the Ouija board more and more. I believe I was falling into what is called a progressive entrapment. When you use a Ouija board, you open a doorway within your cell and you invite spirits into your body. After a while, the spirits can trick you into full possession. Before you know it, You have willingly let a spirit become part of you. This is what I think was happening to me. My personality was becoming altered. I was more angry and vengeful as I took the spirit into me. Finally, I realized what was happening and went to our priest for our school. I told him what was going on and he demanded the Ouija board. I gave it to him willingly. He then set up a time with my mother to come in and bless the apartment. When he got there that night, We opened the door to my bedroom to find it in utter chaos. My mattress was hovering upside down, yet still perfectly made with the sheets and blankets intact. The air was cold and foul. There was a strange mist drifting around my bed. The priest began to sprinkle holy water and demand the entity leave. There was a great shriek and shaking of the bed. Then everything was normal. It was a scary experience. What I should have learned a lesson from. To this day, I cannot touch a Ouija board. Every time I do, I contact that same spirit. Only a few years ago did I have another occasion to have a Ouija board and found myself in the same situation. 
only a little more advanced. After ridding myself of a spirit twice, I can assure you that it is not wise to reinvite a destructive spirit back into your life. It gives them more power. But that was not my final or even my most serious contact with an evil spirit. The worst happened just a few years ago, and to this day I still have nightmares about it. My mother and I moved into a house with one of her friends. We were going through some financial problems, and sharing rent was better than paying full price for rent. My mom's friend Karen had a daughter about my age. We had the basement to ourselves, while our mothers had the upstairs. One night, I woke from a deep sleep by a cold chill in the room, and the fact that someone had their hand on my leg and was slowly moving it to my thigh. I opened my eyes and saw a black mass wavering in front of me. There was no real form to the entity. I started to scream, but the cold hand gripped my throat. A deep voice told me not to scream, that I was going to die. It said it had come to take me to hell. About this time, Kay had heard my weak cry and had come to see what was wrong. She said that she saw me about six inches off my bed, indentations on my neck, like there were a hand there. She screamed, and the entity flung me across the room with a brutal force. The next day, my leg had deep scratches on it. My neck was badly bruised, but the entity never came back, and I never felt it again in that house. I don't know what happened on that night, but I'm glad it didn't happen again.